Hi and welcome to the channel. So in this video I'm going to be making my own plant cloning station. Right, so this year, 2023, has been absolutely dreadful regarding the garden. I've literally just uploaded a video to the Man Cave Projects channel which goes into detail about what actually went wrong with this year. But to cut a very long story short, most of the plants or most of the plant genetics that I've built up in the garden have almost all disappeared. So all of our herbs and a lot of other plants as well have, have gone because I haven't been able to maintain them this year. So I obviously want to replace them. It's gonna be very expensive to do it unless I do something like a cloning exercise whereby one, plant of each from the garden and then obviously take cuttings from that and and clone those plants to get several plants from that one plant i've done cloning before it's not been that successful about 60 70 percent hit rate on actually getting the cuttings to root and then obviously planting them on so i've seen a lot about aeroponics and building your own cloning station so i thought i'd give that a go i do have a number of items around the uh, house that I can use so the expense of it is not going to be that great I've got a small uh, pump from an old uh, sort of pond setup it's only a small one and need to see if that actually works again I've got a tote uh, so a uh, an actual crate with a lid that we can use for that as well so the only things I'm really gonna have to buy are the pipe work that goes inside the small jet nozzles, which you can get them from Timu, eBay, somewhere like that. Uh, and obviously the other fittings to go into that. Don't really need a lot, a lot more. I'm using some small plant pots that I found in the greenhouse. And you need sort of neoprene discs. Haven't got those, don't fancy buying those. They're quite expensive. So I'm going to be using a uh, gym mat from Decathlon, the cheapest one they do, which is about £4.50. Uh, and again, I'll go through that process so let's see if this works. So without further ado, let's get involved in this now. I'll show you the equipment that I'm going to be using and we'll carry on and, and do the build. All right, so this is our tote. Again, don't have to buy this, I've already got it. I have started to work out some things, but we'll go through that. So I've actually used this for uh, hydro dipping car parts, again, Start of next year, I will do a lot of videos on hydro dipping. It's really interesting. It is quite easy to do as long as you've got the technique right. So let me just show you where I've got up to. I, I was going to just build this without doing a video because I really, obviously, I, I don't know if it, it's going to work or not. But I thought I'd just video the process. So if you are watching this, it has worked. So we have our tote or our crate. Also going to need some pipe work to go on the inside. And again, I'll show you how this uh, principle works. So I've chosen the cheapest plastic pipe I can buy, which is 22 mil overflow pipe. That's what it's called in the UK. And this is used side of toilets to, in case the toilet system overflows, this will take the water outside. So this is by far the cheapest pipe I can find. Got to be using three uh, T pieces, obviously, that fit this pipe. Going to be using three, sorry, no, one, two, three, four elbows. The plant pots themselves. So these are the plant pots that I'm using. You can buy, these come with, uh, you know, the propagators that you have on your windowsill. A lot of them come with these small pots. It's about 50 millimeters across. So I'm using those because I've got lots of those, almost a hundred, I think, of these. So I'm going to be using these and they're used to sit in the holes that we're going to drill in that lid. And then the neoprene disc goes in there. For the neoprene disc, again, just this very cheap training gym mat from Decathlon, about £4.50. And all I've done with that is I've cut two pieces, used some carpet spray foam uh, spray adhesive sprayed both sides left it to go almost dry 
and then sandwich those together. That gives us a nice depth of disc. I've already cut the discs out. I needed to work out how to cut the discs out. Um, so this is it, just two pieces of that foam together creates a nice thickness. To cut the um, discs out, I started to do it with a pair of scissors. That didn't really work, it was a bit untidy. So I found this two inch pipe, a piece of this two inch pipe in the garden, which I actually used as a, uh, to make goal posts for the children when they were small. I cut a piece off, filed the edge to get a nice sharp edge on there. And I've just literally almost like screwed that into there to take the discs out. And that two inch pipe is almost identical, almost the same size as the uh, pots. What we then get are these nice discs. Again, you can buy these off the internet though if you don't want to go to this. I just wanted to get everything moving and obviously not spend a great deal of money. And then all I've done with the discs, this is one I cut out, so you'll see the difference. So that's with the cutting out with the pipe. And this is cutting the disc by hand. It's not ideal because the water will be spraying up to the lid and if there's any gaps in here it'll actually come out. But once I've got the disc, drilled a hole through the centre and then cut with a Stanley knife so that we have that break so that when we get our plant stems or our cuts they can obviously go straight in there and then that sits in the plant pot. The only thing we have to do with the plant pot is we have to cut the bottom off because obviously the water spray needs to hit the underside of the chute to uh, encourage root growth. So basically in the lid this is going to sit inside the lid. So the other things is a water pump. Again, this, as I said, this is from a small pond that we had. Uh, not sure if this is going to be powerful enough. It doesn't look big enough, personally, but we'll see how we go with that. And then the other thing we need is these almost like sprinkler heads. Uh, 25 in this pack, I think. Uh, and we need those to go into our pipe frame that we're going to sit in here. Water comes up, goes into the pipe frame, comes out of the... Uh, sprinkler heads hits the underside of the uh, lid. We've obviously got our cuttings in there in the neoprene discs and that keeps the uh, cuttings hydrated without the cut cuttings actually sat in water and potentially could rot away. Put a link in the description below uh, to this particular purchase. One or two other things, some tools that we need, some basic tools, but that's basically it. So let's crack on and I'm going to show you the build. Right, so first thing I'm going to do with this is I'm going to be drilling the holes in the top. There's some things I have to do with the piping on the inside in order to attach it to that really small pump. Uh, involves silicone, so I'll show you that later, but the silicone needs to set. I can't do any more with the framework on the, the pipe work on the inside so let's do this first so I'm really governed by the pattern in the top of here where I can put the holes clearly I can't put a hole that spans two of these diamond shapes so I've measured and marked crosses in the center of the diamonds and then anywhere else that I feel is a good spacing because obviously we're dealing with cuttings so the cuttings although obviously the stems small the leaves that are left on the cuttings need some space in between each of the holes so literally what we're going to have is obviously once this is cut we're going to have these little pots and the reason for using these pots is because you can see it's a stepped thing. so if we cut off there this is a nice um, fixture to put that neoprene disc in. If we didn't have this, a neoprene disc would literally just fall through and, and go in the bottom. You can use the netted 
hydroponics pots. Again, I wanted to spend the least amount of money possible with this. So anyway, I've, I've marked all this out. You do the same. I found a really cheap uh, hole saw attachment in the shed. Obviously this has got different, it's almost like a spring. It's got different attachments. You just choose the one you want. And obviously it's got a guide uh, drill bit in the center. First thing you need to do is make sure that the diameter of the cutter that you choose is going to be suitable for the pot that you're going to use. So I've just drilled into a piece of cardboard. Don't want to drill into here because if it's the wrong size hole, because it's a center guide with the drill bit, once you've made that hole, you're not going to be able to widen the hole um, if it needs widening with any ease of difficulty. So our pot fits nicely in the hole. So I'm happy with that. So all I'm going to do now is I'm just going to go around this lid and drill all of the holes that we need. Take a lot that took a lot more effort than it should have done. So that is gonna fit our plump pot size nicely. So again, as I said, I'll go around and I'll do them all now. Right, so that's the holes cut. It's getting dark now, so I'll leave it for tonight and we'll crack on with this again tomorrow. So the next step is to just cut the bottom off these uh, plant pots just to leave a bit of a collar and then obviously we can put all those in. Right so we've drilled all of the holes in the top, had to file them out a little bit, wasn't it ex an exact science with regard to which hole cutter I had and the diameter of these uh, plant pots. I've just do a little bit of a recap so these are the plant pots, obviously cut down. Let's get that one. So the next stage. Is going to use. A four mil drill bit. I'm just going to drill a hole in the center of each one of these uh, plugs. I also drill, drilled all the holes, Stanley knife, get these neoprene plugs, I'm just going to cut a line or a slit in there, in every single one of those and then that will make it a lot easier to get the uh, neoprene disc around the cutting. So apart from a real good clean, that's our top pretty much done. So next thing to do is I want to build the pipework in here. So the pipework stems from whatever pump you're using. So you want a, want a piece of pipe which comes up with a T on it. And that goes either way. And then around the inside of the actual tote box, we want pipework there. So basically we've got pipe running all the way around the outside on one straight through the middle with a T going down into this, and it's actually the pipe that comes up from the pump, which supports everything in theory, but we'll see how it goes. So I've already started this because the fitting that's in this tiny little pump, which I still don't know if it will work or not. Um, because the fitting's so small, I've had to silicone in some hose pipe, some flexible hose pipe into this. Uh, waste in order to fit that in and we've already got our T on the top and that will sit right in the center so <coughs> I'm 
two long lengths, two shorter lengths, and then two lengths in between here. I'm going to measure all that, get them cut, and then I'll assemble everything and show you the next stage. Right, so this is where we're up to. Right, so this is where we're up to. So I've built the frame. As I said, pipe coming up from the pump, T, into two more T's, and then a frame around. So just make sure, I'm not going to give any dimensions for this because your bo the box that you're using could be completely different to this one. But just make sure that it's a few centimetres down from the top, and it's about three centimetres in all the way around. The next thing to do is we are going to be putting these these sprinkler heads which are, have got a th screw thread on them so we're going to put those at regular intervals along all of this pipe work on the top and then when the pump pumps the water through it will spray out from these um, almost like sprinkler heads and that's what will be wetting the, un the tip the bottom tip of the cuttings that we have in the plugs so what I'm going to do with this, I'm going to get a small piece of pipe, an off cut, and work out what size of uh, drill bit I need so that it's just slightly smaller than the screw thread on this side and I can safely screw these in and they can hold into place. Right, so I'm glad I experimented on a spare piece of pipe. So these are not that easy to put in. They've got a screw thread on the bottom, but that really doesn't do much. So I've used a four millimeter drill bit, drilled through, still couldn't get these in. So I've had to use a heat gun just to heat up around the area. Push these all the way in and then pulled them out and unscrewed them slightly to fix them into place. I'm probably going to put a blob of silicone around there to stop it from leaking, but that's the best I can do. So what I'm going to do now is position these all the way around the edge. I've got 25, so I'll work out what is an even spacing for these. They seem to be directional as well, so there's a small hole there, and it kind of hits this top hat thing and comes out. So I'll probably do them alternate, one like that and one like that and then just carry on so that hopefully the spread will be nice and even uh, with the water spray. Right so that's all of the um, sprinkler heads in. Not happy with this so because some of them are loose which means obviously they're going to leak. So if you've got any suggestions at all that will help obviously people watching this video to maybe do this a little better um, a better process to actually fix these in. I was thinking of a tap and die set, just couldn't be bothered going into the workshop to get it out, but if I was doing this again, I'd possibly do that. So, yeah, four mil hole, um, create a thread, and then these will screw in a lot easier. What I'm going to have to do with these, I think, is as I said, just a little bit of silicone around the bottom. So, I'm going to clean this all out, Fill it with some water, see if this uh, pump actually works and whether these actually work as well. Okay, so this is what we've got at the moment, a complete disaster. So as I suspected, that tiny little pond pump is probably not sufficient. We've got some leaks, obviously we've got leaks around every one of these, so they need sealing in. Maybe that would improve it, but I still don't think this little pump is enough didn't really want to spend any more money on this project tell you the truth but looks like I'm going to have to unless I can get one second hand. So the next stage I'm going to seal all these in and then look to source another pump and if I can find one I think this might actually work. Right so this is where I'm up to with this project. So these green sprinklers I've had to glue those in with a two-pack uh, plastic glue. So plastic weld or something like that will do. 
So they're all fastened into place, wasn't ideal. Um, I've kept with this tiny little pump, which I was given sort of free of charge. Still don't think it's going to be, um, it's going to be powerful enough. I've just attached it at the bottom. I uh, used a grommet, a rubber grommet, glued that into the end of the pipe, made a hole in that, and then inserted the uh, connector from the pump into that bottom pipe, into this one. So let's turn this on and see how it goes. All right, so this is our first major failure. Um, that pump just isn't big enough at all. It works, but it's just far too small. Um, so I've got a dilemma now. Do I carry on with this project and have and buy a pump? I think the cheapest pond pump I can see is about 30 quid. Or do I abandon the project now because obviously it hasn't really cost me a great deal of money up to now. Um, what I think I'm going to do is yeah, I'm just going to look for a bigger pump. I can't leave this project now and hopefully that water jet will improve significantly so that it's a fine spray hitting the bottom of the seedlings. At the moment obviously this just wouldn't work. Right, so let's see where we're up to. Just a quick recap, because it's been about a week and a half since videoing the last section. So these green sprinkler heads that I originally had are rubbish. They don't work. Certainly not going to put a link in the description to these. They're just not good enough. It's just a single jet of water which hits this top bit here and then with enough pressure it will probably atomize a little bit or mist but no they're completely useless so what I've had to do is source a new uh, sprinkler head and that is these a little bit more expensive obviously than the green ones but not a great deal more expensive I'll put a link definitely put a link in the description uh, this video below uh, to these where I actually purchase these so these have got an adjustable spray pattern on them so all the way in and that's locked off so it, it's watertight as you open it up it goes to a spray and then as you open it up a little bit more it goes to a jet so it's it's the same principle as a um, a, no, uh, a, a hose reel nozzle. So I bought these 6.5 millimeter diameter drill bit to get these into the pipe. And this is what we've got. I've used a thing called Stixall, which you can buy from Tool Station in the UK. Uh, Stixall, which is a silicone adhesive to actually embed these in. Not the prettiest job in the world, but hopefully it works. So the next thing we're going to do is to link this up to our new pump, which I want to discuss with you. So the old pump, which I found in the shed, is this one. And the new pump, which was actually donated free of charge by a very good friend of mine, Mick Kenny. He was an absolute gentleman so he was looking to swap out his uh, pond pump for a bigger one so he's let me have this one um, and this is a I'm not sure what the model is I think it's a hose lock or something like that but this will definitely do the job so we're going to sit that in the bottom of our um, tub connect up the pipe work fill it and then let's see how it goes with regard to uh, turning this on and uh, hopefully it will work Right, so let's plug it in and see what we get. Uh, I think you'll agree, <laughs> that is a huge difference. 
So I just need to alter um, some of those heads so that they come out more of a spray pattern. We've got a major, major leak here. So we might have to do something. It's not affecting anything because once the lid's on, the water will be retained within the tub. It's not really affecting anything, but I would like it, would like that to be a bit better. But that's fantastic. So let me see if I can change one of these. Yeah, so they adjust really well. Brilliant. So I think this is a success. Right, the next thing to do is I'm just going to reduce the length of the pipe which goes into the pump so that this just drops down slightly. And now once the lid is on, which is here, and we've got all of our cuttings in there, they're going to get uh, soaked, I think, with that spray pattern. Right, so there you go, an aeroponics pod actually works, thankfully. It's taken a little bit longer than I thought, but obviously everything like this is trial and error. Please subscribe to the channel, and as usual, if you've enjoyed this particular video, hit the like button. We are going to be featuring this aeroponics pod quite a lot through the year, especially obviously during the, uh, the growing season. So I think the first thing we're going to try with it is tomato plants. So we take some cuttings, uh, set it up, nice and warm and get those cuttings uh, flourishing before we plant them out. New way of uh, looking at the garden and, and how to grow things so I'm quite excited about this year. Thanks again for watching uh, and as I said please subscribe to the channel. Your support is really important to us.